What's up you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny and I'm That Props Girl and today we are jumping straight into part two of my analysis on the costumes in six. So if you didn't see my first video where I talked about Aragon, Bolin and Seymour, I do suggest watching that before you watch this video. Be sure to give this video a like if you do enjoy it because it lets me know you wanna see more content like this as well as consider hitting that subscribe button and bell so that you don't miss any of my uploads. With all that said and done, let's jump straight into part two. Moving right along to Anne of Cleves, my fave. Well, one off. Okay, here is her Queenspiration pick right here. Now she is based off Nicki Minaj and Rihanna. Can totally see that. Cleves is the only costume that sort of changes throughout the show. So in our version, she has a jacket that gets removed. Um, and then she's in this like, cute little bra and oh, it just, it's just, it just gives me life. She has got like these diagonal, um, lines on her costume she has got these like gloves that come up to about here and then she's got on the top which is actually a vest she's got this like cap that comes out here cap that comes out here jacket comes on and she's in shorts she's the first one to not be in a skirt now that is a statement that is a statement to her independence because post henry i said this in my first video she did pretty well because of her prenup she was able to be well off for the rest of her life. And that's what her song is about. It's about her being well off. And that's, and when everyone's like, that doesn't sound awful at all. And she's like, no, that actually isn't. I might not win the competition, but my life's amazing. And I think, you know, people dismiss her because like, oh, he didn't like her. She wasn't pretty. It's like, be that as it may, she is very well off. So I love her for that. I love her costume just oozes independence she's got studs like she's got them up here she has them but she's not needing to fight a bit like seymour she's not needing to fight as much as the other girls because she's like there's no need there's no competition here like i won i i literally got almost everything i ever wanted like no husband didn't want one anyway and i got a palace and i've got all this these amazing riches and and it's just it's just really really cool i absolutely love her costume her costume is red because you know red is like the sort of color of fire and passion and and that is again very specific to say like she is not a submissive person and she was you know she was like no bro like this ain't gonna fly well you're not gonna leave me high and dry and yeah she just She's a boss babe and I absolutely adore her. And I actually just noticed this as well. Okay, so Aragorn, Cleves, Seymour. Seymour died. She's excused from this matter. But the two that he divorced, they still have like their, their queen crowns, which is super cool. Like, that's just a little tidbit that I'm noticing. And so did Jane. So it's kind of like, almost like his favorites in a way. Anyways, that's just a little, little thing that I've noticed. Moving on, we have got Catherine Howard. Catherine Howard is so many people's favorite characters. I adore Catherine Howard as well. I love the fact she's purple. Her costume is just gorgeous. She is one though who has an extremely plastic sort of skirt. She is meant to look like a little minx, let's say that. Her top half is meant to look like a corset. Now, there are corsets and there are corsets. This is meant to be like a corset. You know, the kind of like look that wasn't acceptable in this era. So she's got the long sleeves on to kind of say like she was tamed, like she's got the long sleeves on, but she's still wearing this corset. Like she's, st she's still a flirt. Her skirt is very plasticky around the outside. It has a split in the middle where like you can see the outline of her like bottoms or her leotard and she also has bare midriff the openness of that skirt and the corset i feel like that is a nod to she was a flirt and her hair very much she's got like the ariana grande um top ponytail look her inspiration is a is ariana grande and britney spears her story is tragic like it's just it's so easy for us to dismiss her and just go she was a flirt she got what was coming to her no this is a girl who was manipulated this is a girl who suffered this is a girl who went through an awful lot because men just saw her and went oh well i know what i want from you and that's all she ever got known as 
And that takes a toll on a person. And so we can look at her and just go, oh, she was a party girl. But she's a party girl who had a lot of feelings. Like, you don't know, like, she could have been neglected as a child. And the attention that she got from males, it provided stability for her. Like, you have to remember this time, like, in this era, male attention was important because it actually it enabled you stability. Like you didn't want to be out of favor, but you certainly wanted to be in favor. And so when Henry came along, yes, he was older than her, but that provided her so much stability. And it also rose her up in the ranks in terms of where she sat historically, like where she sat within the kingdom. So it's unsurprising that everything happened the way it did. But we are digressing from the talk of the costumes, but yeah, so there's definitely a lot more plastic um, feeling and so much color on her. And I think that is to go to say like the vibrance of this girl. Yeah, we've got the plasticky sort of feeling that we had but with Boleyn and I think that that's again drawing the two that were beheaded together. I do like the fact that they linked them together like they are the two that have like these types of skirts. The plastic, the chokers, the this, the no crowns. She's got the ponytail claw thing that goes around kind of like a scrunchie around her ponytail and Boleyn has got the one that goes around her space buns but they don't have crowns why because you need a head to wear crowns so it's kind of like they've got collars okay and so then we have got our Catherine Parr Catherine Parr what a babe okay she is the only one in pants that is very very strategic she's got the studs on her head so you know how i was just talking about like how we had the collars on the other two so those same like collar like studs are on her head so like this but it's spikes but not like crown spikes the reason she's in pants is to show that she is the progressive one she's the one who fought for women's rights she is the one who survived she's the one who is like really standing up for herself because everyone gives her such an easy rap by just going like you survived blah 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 but like as she says in her story she's like why does that have to be my story remember that i was a writer i wrote, I wrote books and psalms and meditations i fought for female education so all my women could independently study scripture she even got a woman to paint her picture Yes, I know the lyrics. I've seen that, that show way too many times. She also has these glorious like puff sleeves and just like blue is that typical color of royalty. And you just look at her and you're like, what a queen. And she is, she stands on her own. She's the one who says, girls, stop fighting about this. We need to stand as one. And that's what her costume says. You know, she's, She's in, I say she's in pants, she's kind of in tights as well. She's still sexy like the other girls, but her number is glorious because it's got that sort of like same Seymour vibe, but then it goes into like the pop moment at the end. And I love the fact that she's not really seen very much in the rest of the show, but then she ends the show and it's like, oh, I did not think much of you before, but now, whoo, whoo, whoo exactly how I felt when I first saw the show. I love the fact that she doesn't have long sleeves like the other girls. You know, she's got a sleeve, like it's capped and it's pushed up. But that, and again, it is, is significant because, because of the cap on her sleeves, like they stand up on its own. And that's to say like, she stands up by herself. She holds herself, she holds her head up high. And that's, it's just so remarkable. All of the costumes together on stage just look absolutely phenomenal and my gosh, the swings who have to play all of these roles, whew, hats off to them because they've got a tough job. Like all of these six roles are difficult scenes. Like there are none that are easy. And it's, it's just, it's really, really clever to show how they have incorporated simple concepts um, and, and made them work really well in costuming. Like I love the repeated motif of like the plasticky sort of color with the black, pleather and the um, studs and all the various little variations and motifs that go through all of the different queens but also make them so unique and it's been really fun to actually analyze them and think about all this sort of stuff because you kind of like until you like sit down and reflect on it you don't you wonder like you know was the costume designer thinking about all these sorts of things and I definitely think they were and that it's not a coincidence like a lot of these design choices were made 
but that's part of design and that's what makes design so fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to give it a like if you did and consider hitting that subscribe button and bell so that you don't miss a single one of my uploads and I will see you guys next time. Bye.